Okay, right on, yeah. So. Cool. That's Andy uh, saying on that uh, first tune from Sideline. And now for the second tune from you guys, what's it going to be? Another one off the Ups and Downs in their name Towns recording, uh, written by a great guitar player, songwriter David Coffey. Uh, this is a tune that's uh, doing well for us. It's called Jesse's Barn. Jesse's Barn on WNCW. That sounds like that could be from the record, just where you just got the perfect take there. But no, that's live here on, in Studio B on WNCW on a Friday morning. Uh, Andy Buckner singing that one. You said it's a David Coffey song. Uh, but I don't know, Andy, that, that could be a, a song about uh, your days back at East Tennessee State. One of those stories Amen. happened there at the barn. They're just outside of town. Well, it sounds pretty familiar. You know, I grew up living that kind of way so yeah. <laughs> on the farm we got about a about an 85 acre farm on my parents place and that's what i grew up doing so right on right on definitely relate to it uh-huh if, if i could also ask you too I, you'd done some uh some songwriting for some country folks too before course, yeah. joining in here and uh you guys borrow from you get get songs from from all over the place and you know bluegrass folks country folks is it is it kind of easy to adapt a country yeah, song so, to bluegrass sometimes. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely comparisons and similarities, and and uh, it, the the form of writing always comes from a lot of true stories or things that I've grew up doing my whole life or meeting certain people along the way. But definitely similarities in the country and bluegrass world, and I think they got kind of go hand in hand. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, you guys in sideline. This is what you're. You've got five records down now. Is it, we're up to six now. Six, six now. Yeah. 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 And and uh, so. You've been getting gathering songs for a while. You've got a lot of different authors on this one, Coffee on that one, and various folks. How does that happen? How do you guys come up on songs? Is there like a, a process, or is it real kind of organic? Well, it's, it's changed over the years. When we first started this band, 
it was hard to get material from songwriters. Um, <clears throat> I guess as you perform more and gain a little notoriety, it, you know, you, they start they start arriving, you know. Yeah. But uh, typically what we do is uh, we get uh, a lot of songs come via email uh, to uh, – the band has a, a, an email address of its own, and we get a lot of that. And uh, I usually listen to it before anybody. And, and if I think it's going to fit, or even if I don't, I'll – if it's something I think that one of these guys is going to like, I'll present it to the band, you know, while we're traveling, just listen to it in the bus, and we talk about it, and we've worked them up like that. I mean, we've done, we've we've worked songs up, you wouldn't believe how we've worked them up, how many different ways. I mean, huh. we'd have an idea, like Thunder Dan, for example, which we're going to do here in a minute, uh, it was on a demo, and we were backstage. I don't remember where it was at, but Troy Boone was in the band at the time, and he just started singing it. Yeah. And we just started playing it, and it, it started evolving. And uh, Skip, if, uh, that's pretty much the way we worked that song up. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. there wasn't a whole lot of uh, uh, deliberate thought put into it, but everything just kind of fell together. And where we were at at the time, you know, as a band and and whatnot, it just kind of clicked into place. And, uh, you know, that it, it takes off from there. And then there are some songs where we might – kind of dive into a little bit, hit a wall, take a break, break away. Uh, Steve actually reminded me here a couple of weeks ago there was a song that has a really cool, intricate piece in the middle of it, uh, and he actually had gone, he had to go mow his, his yard at the time. <laughs> we, were uh, we were having a rehearsal at his house, and he was like, man, if I don't get my yard mowed, we got to we got to go, uh, uh, it'll be next week before I can get it mowed. So he took off, he did that, we kind of broke away, made some sandwiches and whatnot, and then this idea started rolling around, and then by the time he got back around to to where it was at, uh, it, it it had blossomed into something really cool, and then he added his part to it, and everything just kind of fell together. So, it, I no, mean, they were, they were more like, no, nah, man, we don't need you, so you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we needed to think clearly. There you go, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> but... Uh, it, different stuff like that, you never know how it's going to hit you. Uh, but it all starts with, with sitting down with you know, 30, 40, 50 different songs and just trying to pick through what you feel fits you. Yeah. Uh, not every song uh, that you get sent, even if it's a great song, is not necessarily one that would fit this band. Or you might have some songs that it's too good to pass up, and you've got to find a way to make it work because the song is just that good. So it takes a creative open mind and, and no, no ego and no, no uh, personal, you know, if, if something gets vetoed, you can't take it personal because everybody's just working to, to make the band the best that, that they can make it. Well, that's a good lesson for folks to learn. Well, well Skip, speaking honestly, because I mean, we uh -huh. joke around, but truthfully, we've probably recorded more tunes that you were not against, but you weren't a fan of than anybody in the, yeah, I'm man. very, very picky <laughs> Are when it comes okay. to songs. All right. But I'm not I'm not, you know, arrogant. Uh, <laughs> no. If it's a good song, it's a good song. If I don't like it. Yeah, because after one or two of them went number one, we were like, Yes, see, I told you, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it pays off. The pickiness pays off. You guys get a good collection of songs on each record. This new one has a good dozen songs. Uh Talking with uh, Skip Cherry Holmes there on the guitar and Steve Dilling on the banjo about uh, their band Sideline playing tonight in Elkin and tomorrow at the Floyd Country Store. And you mentioned Old Thunder Dan, didn't you? I did. Yeah, that's a uh, that's been. I guess you would that would be our Fox on the Run or, or Rocky <laughs> Top for us. Uh, yeah, great song uh, written by uh, Josh Manning up in Ashland, Kentucky, and. Uh, Elmer Burchett, great banjo player, uh, had this on a demo. He he played for us and uh, fell in love with it right away. And <clears throat> knew that was one we wanted to record. And I don't think we had any idea this song would take off like it did. Uh, people just adapt to it. And now the, some people different places we play have a little theatrics worked out in the audience with the four dogs and hogs and logs. And, yeah, it's crazy. So uh, it's been a good one for us. All right. Song of the Year for us a couple years ago. Yeah, it was. Congratulations yeah, yeah, yeah. on that and all the great accolades you all have gotten.